Chairman Grassley, uh, Ranking Member Feinstein, and dis distinguished members of the committee, thank you for inviting me to testify on the Sexual Assault Survivors Bill of Rights today. My name is Terry Cruz. I am an actor, author, former athlete, advocate, and a survivor of a sexual assault. This past year, we have seen powerful men in Hollywood and elsewhere finally held accountable for sexual harassment and assault. We also saw the backlash survivors faced after coming forward. I wanted these survivors to know that I believed them. I supported them and that this happened to me too. This encouraged me to come forward with my own experience and reflect on the cult of toxic masculinity that exists in our society. As a child, I watched my father violently abuse my mother, using his power and authority to dominate her. All I could think of was how to protect her, how if I get strong, I can protect her from this living nightmare. As I grew up, this thought transformed the type of man I became. I swore I would never be like my father, and yet I believe to my core that as a man, I was more valuable in this world than women. As a protector and symbol of strength, I was more worthy that women were beneath me. I used images of women's body and pornography at my disposal, validating my need for control. I often cut women short of sharing personal details of their lives so they would seem less human, less real. As a man, I was taught my entire life that I must control the world. So I used power, influence, and control to dominate every situation, from the football field to the film set, even in my own home with my wife and children. Then, in 2016, while at a party with my wife, I was sexually assaulted by a successful Hollywood agent. The assault lasted only minutes, but what he was effectively telling me while he held my genitals in his hand was that he held the power, that he was in control. This is how toxic masculinity permeates culture. As I shared my story, I was told over and over that this was not abuse, that this was just a joke, that this was just horseplay. But I can say that one man's horseplay is another man's humiliation. And I chose to tell my story and share my experience to stand in solidarity with millions of other survivors in the world that I know how hard it is to come forward. I know the shame associated with assault. It happened to me. I'm not a small or insecure man, but in that moment and in the time following, I've never felt more emasculated. As I watched women and colleagues in my industry come forward to share their Me Too stories, this shame washed over me again and again, and I knew I had to act. I am honored to use my platform and story to help create additional civil rights protections for survivors across the nation under the Sexual Assault Survivors Bill of Rights, which is why the Sexual Assault Survivors Bill of Rights is a critical bill that must be enacted in all 50 states. This bill gives survivors the right to a fully government subsidized rape kit to alleviate the financial burden of seeking justice. It gives survivors the right to receive information, including access to police reports, 
rape kit results, and access to sexual assault counselors. And by requiring that rape kits and forensic DNA evidence be retained for the duration of the statute of limitations, this bill gives survivors the right to have time to distance themselves from the immediate trauma before making the difficult decision to report the assault to law enforcement. This is why I sit here today with Amanda Wynn and the RISE team. Every man, woman, and child deserves to be seen as equal under the law. The Sexual Assault Survivors Bill of Rights does just that by recognizing survivors' basic civil rights. While we can call attention to a culture of toxic masculinity and the need to disrupt power dynamics, this bill creates long-term change and gives power and control back to survivors. All survivors must be protected, and this bill must be enacted in all 50 states. Thank you.